Hey, I'm Stephanie, and it's time for a Partners in Cream Project Pan update. This project was originally started by Steph Lyons and Dalin, both of whom will be linked below, along with the project rules. But the basic premise of it all is that we try to focus on using our cream and liquid cosmetics to show them the love they deserve before they expire, since they do tend to go off faster than powder products. We're going to jump right into this one, starting with my Rowan 75 Degrees eyeshadow palette, which I used 17 times. For someone who loves eyeshadow as much as I do and loves to palette hop, using one palette 17 times in one month is a huge deal. But I have to say, this not only looks good on its own, but it also looks good as a companion palette. So I was able to get a lot of use out of it while still being able to satiate my hunger for eyeshadow palettes. And they also work well with single eyeshadows, of course. Case in point, I was going to a friend of mine's art opening and I wanted to look kind of like an undercover rock star. And the very first palettes that I think of when I think of creating a look like that are my Rowan quads because they just kind of melt into your eyes as you wear them, notoriously creasing throughout the day. I think that's why there's such like a love-hate relationship with these things throughout the community. But I personally think that the creasing looks kind of sexy, giving you that slept and look even if you're wide awake and since my aesthetic is trying to look like a rock star off the tour bus anyway I thought this would be perfect for that look but this event was going to be an all-day thing for me so I did have longevity in the back of my mind plus I didn't want to go too smoky or sultry because it was all going to get started before the sun went down so what I ended up doing was pairing this palette with my about face matte liquid eye fluid and a Stila liquid eyeshadow to to create the perfect balance between longevity and fleetingness, between looking refined and looking tussled. And if you want to see what that looked like, I did film it and make a short out of it, so I'll link that in case you want to see it. But back to the project at hand, I was a little bit worried about having an eyeshadow palette in a project like this simply because I really do like palette hopping so much. But this ends up being the perfect palette for this kind of project because it plays so well with others. This kind of warm bronze shade here really does a good job of warming up a look. This gold can add some extra sparkle and light. This kind of darker greeny grungy bronze is perfect for darkening a look, making it a little bit more sultry and smoky. And this one here, I actually really enjoy kind of smudging right on the lower lash line. I don't know, it gives me kind of a spicy pumpkin look. Perfect for fall. Next is my Estee Lauder Double Wear Stay In Place makeup, which I used 29 times, and I am still enjoying this, but I have noticed that it's not sticking to my nose quite like it used to, and I'm wondering if that's because my nose has gotten even oilier, or if it's because the formula is starting to change. But it's not separating in the bottle and it still smells perfectly fine and it feels normal and it's acting normal everywhere else on my face. So for now, I'm just assuming it's me. Hi, I'm the problem, it's me. So I am gonna fiddle with this. Although truth be told, I'm not sure how much longer I'll be able to keep wearing this particular shade because my tan is fading faster than sunlight on an autumn day. So I might end up having to switch back to my winter shade mid month before my next update. But to be honest, I'm just happy to be using what I have and enjoying it. So I'm not gonna be too finicky about which bottle gets used up first. Moving on, I used my Tom Ford lipstick in the shade Lara 39 times and all I have left is this little bitty baby nubbin. So I am definitely going to keep this in the project with the hopes that I can use it up by the end of the year, especially because this is not only one of my favorite lipsticks, but it is also one of my older lipsticks, and I do want to make sure that it gets used up before it goes off. When it comes to my Hourglass Illum Sheer Color Trio, I used it a total of 25 times in the past month. And uh, looky here, is that a pan I see? It is, and I have been using this since January. January, and I just hit pan this past month, which makes me think it's probably good that I don't own too many cream bronzers at once. Although, 
that's kind of a tricky balance, isn't it? How many bronzers is too many? Because our skin tones change depending on the season. Plus there's the matter of finishes. Like my Tom Ford bronzer has a dewy finish and this hourglass bronzer has a smoothing matte finish. Yet my Patrick Ta cream bronzer has a kind of middle of the road sort of sheerness to it. And it's like the perfect color to use on a minimal makeup day. To be honest, I still don't have a completely solid idea of how many cream bronzers is too many cream bronzers to have. To be clear, I'm not saying that I believe that there is an objectively correct number of cream bronzers that someone should own. What I'm saying is, in light of my makeup usage and my preferences for my collection, how many cream bronzers would I ideally have in my inventory? And I still don't have an answer to that question. The only conclusion I have come to thus far is I am very glad that I have not purchased any new cream bronzers since forever. It's been way before my know by year even. So I'm very glad <laughs> because I think I would be overwhelmed if I did. But actually, I would like to know how many cream bronzers do you have or how many cream bronzers do you think is the ideal number for you? And last but not least, we have my Dior Lip Maximizer. Hiya! Luronic Lip Plumper, which I used a total of 37 times in the past month. And all I have to say about this one is... <laughs> Normally, I would do a much more enthusiastic panning dance, but unfortunately, I'm dealing with some severe shoulder pain today. And uh, what you just witnessed was my upper body's entire range of motion. So I guess we're just going to have to hope that I pan something again soon so that I can show you my moves. And as I say that, I can hear my mother laughing at me from across the ocean, because if anyone knows how bad my moves are, it's her. But who am I talking to? You've seen my panning dance before. You know how lame it is. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what they say, dance like no one's watching. Now I realize it looks like there's still product in the bottom here, and to be fair, there is, but it's impossible to get out. What happened was there was a little tiny layer of product at the very bottom that was so thin that I could not reach it with the doe foot applicator. And so my plan was that I was gonna remove the stopper so I could really get in there and dig the rest of it out. And I estimate there were probably maybe five uses left and I wanted to get all of them. So. I went in to get the stopper and the stopper fell in. Now I've removed stoppers before, but that's never happened to me. Is this a common problem? Or are my moves just so amazing <laughs> that I sabotaged myself? I don't know. All I know is that the stopper moved in here and it displaced the product. And so it looks like the product's up to here, but really it's just like a super thin layer because that's the stopper that's in there. The good thing is that when the stopper fell down there, it displaced enough product that I could get it with the doe foot applicator again. So I did get a couple more uses out of it, but now when I pull the doe foot out, it's completely dry. So... I'm calling it. So in its stead, I decided to roll in my Gucci lip balm in the shade Esther Rosewood. This is something I got for Christmas last year and I enjoyed wearing it all winter and spring. And then in the summer, it kind of fell by the wayside, I think mainly because of the color. This is the sort of thing I tend to wear in cooler months. And now that it's October, it's the perfect time to use something like this. And putting it in this project will give me the perfect excuse to use such a beautiful product. It looks a little bit threatening to me in the bullet color wise, but it's such a sheer formula that I think it's going to be really easy to wear and I can't wait. All in all, I feel like it's been a successful month. Thanks for hanging out with me for this update. I hope you'll like, subscribe, comment, all that jazz. But even if you don't, I hope you have a wonderful week and we can all remember that even stumbling can be a form of moving forward. So let's stumble in style.